sing the first, the second, and the fourth stanza. The first, the second, and the fourth stanza. And if you have it, let's all sing together. There is beyond the azure blue a God concealed from human sight. He sent the skies with heavenly hue and framed the world with his great mind. There is a there is a God and he is alive. In him we live. In him we live. And we survive. And we survive from, from dust our God, God and created man. He is our God, the great I am. And there was a long, long time ago a God whose voice the prophets heard. He is the God that we should know, and who speaks from his inspired word. There is a God. He is a God. He is alive. He is alive. In Him we live. In Him we live. And we survive. And we survive. From dust a God. He is a God. He is a God. The great I am. Our God. Son upon a tree, a God was willing there to give that he from sin my sin men free, and evermore with him could live. Is a God. There is a He is alive. In Him we live and we survive. From dust a God created man. He is our God, the great I am. Now we can sing that course a little bit better. Amen. Now, is God alive in our lives today, church? We singing kind of. I know I can't hit those high notes. I got to bear with me, but. Let's sing that last. Let's, let's sing that last verse one more time, and let's sing it like we mean it. It's cold outside, we still being blessed. We got a warm church to sit in, we still blessed. We got cushions to sit on, we blessed. We got water in the back to drink. Got a little bit of money in the bank. Amen, Walls. <laughs> we should be blessed. We should be blessed. So let's sing the fourth standard one more time. Let me bring brother that water up. And if you have it, let's sing together. Our God, who sun upon a tree, all life was willing there to give, that he from sin my sin men free, and nevermore with him could live. There is a God, he is alive, in him we live. And we survive from the star. From the star, God created man. Created man. He is a God. The great I am. The great I am. Amen. I'm trying to get my mic to get. I like that bass though. That's a real man. Amen. Base at base. Good to be with you all today. God has blessed us. Sister McBride, I'll eventually get this together and uh, we roll on. That's the world of electronics. Uh, this is St. Valentine's Day. We don't worship St. Valentine, we worship the vigilant God. We worship the uh, virtuous God. We worship the God that has vitality. And looking at Brother Hall and Brother Slay, they seem to have been railroaded uh, into the fest festivities.
privileges of this day. You know, getting flowers and cards and all of that. I have told them you're supposed to train your ladies more appropriately. My wife got me some flowers. make this a joyful day. Sun shining, it's uh, minus two degrees or whatever outside. And uh, we just need to appreciate the Lord. Brother Stevens talking about his shovel. That shows that he needs to come to my training program also. If he would teach his wife to handle that shovel, then he could just sit in the easy chair. I'd like to the uh, male lion, if he just sits back and wait for the females to bring the kill in, then he goes to help them eat it. gave us our ladies as a help me. They help us meet the necessities of life. My amens are getting real thin. That's, that's all right. <laughs> my wife is sitting over there looking at me. I guess I'll be sleeping on a mattress out in the cold today. Good to see brother and sister Sanders and their daughter with us. Brother Atwater, you have a presentation to make. Uh, I'm going to ask you to do that at this time, and then we'll say a word. Sister Thorin, I'm going to ask you to come on down front so I can embarrass you. Just, just come on down front. Uh, for those who are concerned, she has her mask on. I want her to stand right here so I can embarrass her, and then uh, we'll, we'll uh, let her have her seat. Th this is for um, all the young folks that are here that are aspiring to do good things as well. Sister Torrent will be graduating and heading to college. So let's see here. She got... Uh, accepted in an offer from Ferris State University with some money. And she said, nah, I don't want it. I don't want to go there. She got accepted to Central State University again with some money. And she said, nah, I'm, I'm not going to go there either. But I'm grateful that I have the opportunity. Then she got an, uh, an offer to go to Northern Illinois University, again, with some money. And she said, no, I'm not going to go there either. Um, so let me tell you what she decided to do. And I want to read this because it says a lot about her character and her work behind the scenes. I don't know if you all know this, but she, she created and designed a shirt that a lot of y'all actually, I know my wife loves her shirt, and it said awkwardly beautiful on it. And it had a lot of great graphics associated with it. It was all of her work. And, and you know what, this, this is what I love about uh, Sister Dolores and her, her, her women, all her women. They look at how to make money on stuff when they do the work all. So they, they're not only creative, they, they look at the bottom line of their creativity and the value that it has. And that's how you teach entrepreneurship. 
And I'm, I'm happy to see that this young lady's not even 20 years old yet. And she, she's, she's putting her skills to use. So she has a letter here. It says, congratulations. I'm writing today with the privilege of informing you that you've been admitted to Columbia College, Chicago for the fall of 2021. Now, here's the key part right here. Your application demonstrated the type of created creativity, ambition, and intellect that will lead to success at Columbia. Um, the, the admission, this admission decision entitles you to enroll in the graphic design bachelor program. Uh, and they, uh, will, uh, they will be awarding her $10,500 per year to go to school to pursue her passion of graphic arts. Uh, and she's close to home, so Mama can keep an eye on her when she's in the big city doing her thing and growing. And it's important to uh, all of our young girls, uh, uh, my, my, my baby dolls back there, um, I don't care what you have going on in your life. If you do the, the Lord's work, you do your homework, you stay focused on your schoolwork, leave all the boys to me, come send them to me, you will achieve your goals. All my young men do the exact same thing, and there is so much cash to go to school out there. Everyone should be going to school and not having any kind of school debt. Amen? So congratulations. Go fill out some more scholarship money now also to have some spending money while you are in school. Give her a round of applause and a love deposit for uh, a, a, an accomplishment. Amen. All right, brother that one. Isn't that wonderful? Lord, I'm going to get me some social security now. Yeah. We're going to get, get rid of Trump and bring in my sweetie pie. She goes Goodness gracious. Uh, we had to uh, make known of, of the accomplishments that our uh, young, young people do, and we, we are proud of them uh, for, for that. Everything is not bad. <clears throat> we have a news media that accentuates the negative, but there is more positive than there is negative. So don't get caught up, don't get it twisted, uh, because uh, uh, somebody is acquitted. Uh, they are not done yet. Love covers what hate uncovers. Love covers, that's heavenly love now. Uh, heavenly love covers what hate uncovers. Our world is short of heavenly love inventory. Uh, uh, we have an oversupply of hate inventory. Uh, when I talk love now, I'm not talking about the kissing kind or the handshaking kind or the uh, sexual healing talking about the spiritual eternal law, the agape law. It's an attitude, actually. It's an attitude uh, of God to Christ. God had a certain attitude toward Christ, and the attitude was to give him as a gift. Uh, the attitude of Christ to his children are Christians. And that attitude is that Christ gives his life to Christians. This heavenly love is an attitude of Christian to Christian, human to human, that we give to each other. So as God gives to Christ and as Christ gives to us, we give to each other. That completes the loop. If we don't complete the loop, then hate seeps in and muddies the water. Uh, this love is only known by the actions that are prompted. Uh, it is unconditional. And to those that are here in our live audience and those that are 
uh, on the virtual methods, and the drive-bys. We need the unconditional love. See, generally what happens, we express what we call love based on what the recipient has done to us and done for us. If you don't do it for me, I won't do it for you. That's not what I'm talking about. That's what we call earthly hate love. But heavenly love is given unconditionally as to what you do for me. And it takes time to work ourselves out of that. Heavenly love has what we call the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 22. It is, uh, this heavenly love is not feeling based. See, we, we, we base earthly love on how we feel. This heavenly love has nothing to do with how you feel about another person and how they feel about you. It has to do with a command. We are commanded to love the other person irrespective of our feeling. It is a deep, constant relationship that we inherit internally, innately from the God of heaven when you become a Christian. Because the Bible says that God is love. And that means that Christ is love. And when you become a Christian, that means you must be love. And you give it unconditionally. It's not about the Valentine cards. It's not about the roses. As a matter of fact, God gave us the roses. We give them because it's an expression of our love for somebody unconditionally, no matter how they've treated us. But yet, but yet and still, yet and still, yet and still, yet and still, Christ has a paradox. There is a paradox. In Matthew chapter 5, beginning with verse 43, I love his Sermon on the Mount because it's awesome, it's powerful. He starts out in verse 43 and he says, Ye have heard. We've always heard something. Lord have mercy. I heard. Now we don't check it out. I just, I heard. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. I, I think we live by that verse. Love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Notice Christ is Christ is, is, is taking himself away from that. He's saying, Y'all heard that. Now you you now the many times when we heard it, we don't know who we heard it from. We just we just buy so a lot of things we buy into. Uh we 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 we, we it shows up on our doorstep and we don't know how it got there. But I just heard it was good. And that, yeah, that, that I should love my neighbor and hate my enemy. But then Christ said, now let me check in with you. In verse 44, now let me check in. Now you heard in the 43. But in 44 he said, but I, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that Cuss you out. Do good to them that can't stand the ground you walk on. Pray for them that despitefully walk on you and use you. And persecute you. That's what I say. But Jesus, Jesus, that's a paradox. How can I love somebody that talks about my mama? Lord have mercy. How can I love somebody that will sit in the White House when I'm facing death and not lift the hand to assist me if I'm the Vice President of the United States of America? You say, Lord, I'm to love my enemy. 
That just doesn't work for me. And the Lord comes back and he says, it's not about how you feel, Terry. Because you once needed me. And I didn't examine what you did for me. I just gave my life for you. Unconditionally. See, I don't, Terry, I didn't like you. Because as God, I can't stand sin. Because I will chop your head off. But I sent Christ to stand between me and you. And when he shed his blood, I see the blood of Jesus before I see you. And thus, I back off of you and let Christ handle you. And Christ said, but I say, love your enemy because it's a command. Now, let me share this with you now. Let me share this with you. See, 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 uh, uh, uh. One senator, the senator from Utah, Nitt uh, Romney, whatever, yeah, Romney. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, you know, you know, they, they, they happen to be, he happens to be in a religion that uh, Afro-Americans are not allowed to rise in the upper structure. But yet, a man named Eugene Goodman, a man named Eugene Goodman, black man, African man, protected him, he would be dead today. But he led the crowd away from Nit Romney. See, sometimes you, you never know. The person that you necessarily, you put down or you put in a position that they ought not to be in, that very person might save your life. You don't know who you're going to need. Heavenly love covers what hate uncovers. When I look at this, hate is malicious. Jesus said another paradox that I want to share with you quickly. In Luke chapter 14, in Luke 14, in verse number 26, now we'll, we'll, we'll get back to verse 25 just to set up the context. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and he said, there's always multitudes following Jesus. See, a lot of times people, you ask them, what is a Christian? A Christian is a follower of Jesus. Well, there's a whole lot of folks that followed him. The devil followed him. The devil followed him right into the wilderness. So just because you follow Jesus doesn't make you a part of him. See, when, when, when you are a Christian, you don't just follow him. You are possessed by him. He owns you. You do what he tells you to do. He built his church. You want to find his church. You do what he tells you to do. You don't do how you feel and how you think it is or how your traditions or how you were raised. You, do, you deal with how you read the word of God. You've got to read it. And if you don't know how to read it, be like the eunuch. How can I accept some man guide me? Every now and then you need somebody to guide you to help you to better understand what the Lord intends for you to know. But in Luke chapter 14 and verse number 26, if any man come to me, and hate not his father and mother and wife and children. You know, many times we put father, mother, wives, and children ahead of the Lord. You got to be careful about that. Because first of all, the Lord gave you your father. The Lord gave you your mother. The Lord gave you your child. The Lord gave you your friend. The Lord gave you your job. The Lord gave you your body. The Lord gave you everything you got. The Lord gave it to you. How can you put the Lord in second place? Really, the hate here is dealing with priority setting. What he's saying, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother, in other words, put them down the line from me, and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. That's what heavenly love is. Put Christ first. I want to be first. I am number uno, number one. I'm not number two. Just because you feel like I ought to be number two, I'm not number two. We'll put jobs, we'll put everything else ahead of Christ. Until, until, until we, we find out I'm almost getting ready to breathe my last breath. Uh, the, the virus has got me now. My temperature is going up. All of a sudden, we call on Christ. Don't wait until you get into trouble and call on him. When you're doing well, call on him. Don't wait until you get into trouble. 
this is, this, is, this, is, this is a day of love. This is a day of love. He says, you cannot be my disciple. Hate not his father and mother. Now, in case you misunderstood that, let's back back to Matthew chapter 10. See the Bible. It says, you know, you need to interpret scripture by scripture. In Matthew 10, and verse 37, he states it again to help us to get a better grip on that. See, I don't want you to leave here and say, well, Brother Atwater said, you're supposed to hate your father, hate your mother. I didn't say that. Christ said that. And Christ didn't say what you think he said. And here's what he said. Here's what he meant. In Matthew 10 and verse 37, I'm looking at Devon sitting over there and he's a uh, young guy, and he's with his grandparents, and he, he's a blessing to them. I look at Loretta, she brought her mother in. She's a blessing to Lucia. I look at Marvin as he brings his wife in. He's a blessing to Laura. There was a time Laura may have thought that I don't need this rascal. <laughs> but now he's a pretty good guy. Yeah. He gives her a Valentine card every day. never know from whence your heavenly love is going to flow. You can be big and bad for a while and then you have to eat crow. We all have to eat some crow from time to time. Now look what Jesus said to get this pr proper meaning. In verse 30, let, let's pick up 36. But let's go back to 35. I'd like to get the context of the scripture that leads right into it. In verse 35, Jesus says, For I am come to set at m a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. You know, you know, when you really take a look at life, a lot of our challenges come from those who are close around us, uh, those who are in our circumstance. Uh, when we have a need, the need many times comes from those who are far away. Sometimes it even comes from our enemies, those who we talked about and we text and we ran down but then they show up to give us a lift out of our quicksand. He goes on to say in verse 37, he that loveth father or mother more than me, he doesn't use the word hate here, more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake, for my sake, for my sake shall find it. That's Jesus. Getting our priorities right. Now, Hate uncovers. In Genesis 27, back in the Old Testament text, there is a guy named Esau. And in verse number 41, you might be aware of the story of how that 
as Isaac, their daddy, was getting old and he couldn't see well. And it was time for him to transfer blessings to the, the boys. The eldest son normally would get the blessing, which was Esau. But Jacob, being crooked and deceptive, worked the game with his mother and made himself to feel hairy like Esau and spread some venison spray on him because Esau liked to be out in the field hunting. And then when it was time to issue the blessing, Esau was out in the field. Jacob slipped in and acted as though he was Esau. And Isaiah, Isaac, transferred the blessing to the wrong son. He gave it to Jacob, the younger son. But now in chapter 27 and verse 41, the Bible says, And Esau hated Jacob. What did I say? Hate uncovers. It uncovers what love can cover. What happened here is hate uncovers the sibling rivalry. He hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. My father is getting ready to die. And, and, and uh, j j just as soon as he died, then will I slay my brother Jacob. I'll kill that rascal. Hate will make you want to kill somebody. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice and arise. Flee thou to Laban, my brother, to Haran. And so uh, Jacob was told to get out of town. See, sometimes you got to get out of town. Now, the point is that hate uncovers uh, that which love covers. A New Testament rendition, and then, then, then we'll begin to wrap this discussion up in the sixth chapter of Acts. If you have your Bibles there, flip over there. Let's go to the New Testament quickly. And in verse number one, it says, And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose that the, the church has begun to operate now. In fact, you know in the Bible there's only one church. Okay, all the rest of them happen after Bible, after the first century. But in, 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 in the Bible there's only one church, and that's the church that Christ built. All right, and there rose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews. In other words, that's the Jews against the Gent the Gentiles against the Jews. In other words, that's the Republicans against the Democrats. In other words, that's the blacks against the white. No, you, you know, that, that, that's the rich against the poor. In, in other words, there arose a dissension within the church. This is a cultural, cultural argument. Murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews. It, it, you know, really, 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 they used food. They used food as an excuse, but basically they had a cultural problem. They had a problem looking at somebody that is different than they are. And many times what happens is when I have a problem with you, I use some other crutch to, to justify my position when really it is I just don't like the way God made you. I just don't like your looks. But we put something else up. However, when it, all, when it all falls down, the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve, that's the apostles, called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve to it. I love that about the apostles. They learned that the word of God is above all mess in the church. Number one, you go to the Word. You deal with the Word. We cannot leave the Word first. We have to use the Word to solve the problem. Many times we try to solve problems. Well, I wouldn't hear you come with your Bible. We, we, you know, you don't need the Bible. Let's just talk about this. In fact, we'll go outside and settle this thing. No, 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 no. No, you need the Word. The Word solves the problem long term. All right, wherefore, brethren, look ye out among ye seven men of honest report. Get some good men, some men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom you may appoint over this business. Let, let, let us, as apostles, we will keep preaching the word and get some men to handle the issue under the word of God. See, hate breeds out of jealousy. 
going back into the Old Testament, you remember, because Joseph received the coat, jealousy turned around the cycle of time. They hated him on, not because he was Joseph, not because he was the younger son. They hated him all because his daddy gave him a coat and didn't give them a coat. So jealousy, jealousy breeds hate. Culture, racism breeds hate. As we see in Acts chapter 6, I'm reminded of John chapter 4, the Samaritan lady at the well. Jesus comes to Jesus and says, I must go through Samaria. It had been historically that they would go around Samaria. I don't want to go through the neighborhood. I don't want to go through the hood. I can't, I, I, I'm afraid to go through the hood. I, I just won't go through the hood. Uh, I'll take 294 and go around. I'm not going to go through it. You know, I'm not going to, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I just go around. I don't want to go through the hood. Culture, racism, jealousy, a coat. Rich versus poor. Uh, so hate uncovers all of these enmities that go on between us. But now on the other side of the coin, love covers. If we just increased our inventory of love, we could solve our problems. We could solve the parent-to-parent -parent problem. We could solve the parent-to-child problem. We could solve the child-to-child -child problem. We could solve the government to management and business problem. We could solve all kinds of problems if we just had enough heavenly love. And why should we have heavenly love? God covered Jesus. You remember when Jesus was born? When he was born, when he was born, oh, Herod said, I'm going to kill all those boy babies. God stepped down and said, move over to Egypt. And there are things that be right. God covered him. God sent him to enemy territory. And sometimes the enemy will protect you more so than those that you already know. So don't ever discount anybody. God sent him to Egypt, and there he was protected. And finally, when Herod had died, and the word came back to Joseph and Mary, said, now go on back to where you're, into your territory. And so they went back to Nazareth, where he grew up. Jesus also covered for Peter. Peter was a man who said, Lord, 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 I'll die for you. We have a lot of church members like that. They make promises, but yet they don't deliver on the promises. I've been around a long time. You know, and I, I, you know so sometimes you become jaded in your thinking of whether they're going to commit to the promise and make them. But so we're certainly blessed here at North Shore that we have people that do things. Yesterday I was over here and uh, <clears throat> brought some salt over and, uh, and uh, Jeff showed up. He had a plow on the front of his truck. Uh, I had been out kind of shoveling the walk a little bit just to help out. Jeff pulled up and started plowing. Now, we didn't ask him to plow. He just started plowing. Now, he, could, he was on his way to do something else. Somebody was going to pay him something. But he just plowed. Because it's, it's getting colder tonight. You know, it got colder last night. So if you wait too long, it's stuff will freeze. So he just plowed. Now, I know why he did it. Kim probably, he called Kim up and said, Kim, should I do it? And Kim probably said, yeah, because he probably done gave her a Valentine gift or something like that. And so, in other words, she probably said, go ahead and then plow. My point is this. My point is this. Ah, uh, the Lord has a way of covering to get his work done. Okay. Love covers. Jesus covered Peter. Peter hadn't done anything wrong. They put him in jail. They put him, they had soldiers guarding him day and night. The Lord waited until it was real dark and he sent an angel in to Peter snoring. He's slobbering and slobbering in, in his bed and he's snoring and, 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 all, of the, and all of a sudden he, he's walking out. He's sleepwalking, coming out of the jail. The Lord is covering him and then he gets outside and finally the leadership in the city, well, how in the world did he get out? The Lord covered Peter. But then, 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 okay, then the Lord covered Peter. But then I, I checked something else out. Peter learned the lesson in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse number 8. Peter said this. First of all, he said in verse number 7, he says in, in 1 Peter 4 verse 7, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore, this is Peter talking now. Peter is saying, therefore, be sober and watch unto prayer. Now, if you remember, Peter wasn't sober about nothing when he was younger. You know, he couldn't stand Gentiles. He'd cuss you out in a minute. 
He would take his switchblade and chop your ear off. He was a rough guy. But now he's saying, be sober. Watch unto prayer. You know, it's amazing. The older I become, the more I've been more watchful, more patient. Because things that you see are tumultuous today will be triumphant tomorrow. When you're patient and not in a hurry and thinking with the secular mind as opposed to the heavenly mind. And then he says in verse number 8, then he says now, and above all things have what? Have what? Fervent charity. Now, let me, no, 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 no. if you don't understand fervent, you, 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 you miss this thing. See, fervent charity. Charity is love, by the way. That, that's synonymous with love. You know, love, charity, you can use it either way, love. And, and by the way, you can take charity, you can put love there, or you can put Christ there. Either way you want to do it. Christ is love, God is love, charity is fervent. So you, you can put it either way, either way you want it now. He says now, now, but he says now, above all things, have what now? What kind of charity? He said fervent char- What is fervent charity? Fervent charity is like this here. Oh, when Isa makes fun of me, ah. I still love him, and I stretch my love to him, irrespective of what he thinks of me. So, so, so really what fervent is that I stretch my love to those who may not reciprocate with love. I still stretch my love as God stretched his love to the world and he gave Jesus as his only begotten son. You stretch when you don't have to stretch. It's kind of like it's cold right now and it's cold right now and if your house happens to be a little chilly. I grew up in a chilly house. Ah, you can go to certain places. You can see outdoors. You, you stick some newspaper in the hole. You know what I'm saying. But then when you get in the bed, you know, it's kind of chilly. And, you know, the worst thing in the world is to have a blanket that's too short. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You know, you, you're trying to, you know, you, you pull that thing up, you know, around your head and your feet stick out. And then you put it over your feet and then, you know, you're still, you know, but, but then you, you get smart. What you do is you take the blanket and you, you, you tuck it under your feet. All right, then you pull on it and you stretch it up over your head. So, you know, so, so you get into a stretching mechanism. That, that, that's how this heavenly love is. So he says now, this, this fervent charity, this fervent love among yourselves, but what? For this love, this charity, this Christ shall do what? Shall cover what? A multitude of sin. In other words, no matter what the sin is, that heavenly love, it, it'll cover up a Donald Trump. Heavenly love will cover up somebody who cut off your income stream and you lost your job. This, this, this heavenly love will cut off somebody who, in other words, they got their vaccine before you got yours. And you wonder why you can't get one. Heavenly love will make you stretch. Will make you stretch, all right? Heavenly love, Peter says. And finally, finally, heavenly love, it suffers long. Whereas earthly hate, it uncovers envy. Heavenly love is kind, but earthly hate, it displays the bad in others. Heavenly love is excited by truth, but the earthly hate, it, 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 it will lie to look good. Heavenly love, it, it, it forbears, it puts up with stuff, whereas earthly hate will separate you from dislikes. A heavenly love it has faith as its foundation. Earthly hate pretends to be in control when it's not. Heavenly love has hope as its foundation, whereas earthly hate has a false prophecy. Heavenly love endures to the end, whereas earthly hate promises but never delivers. Heavenly love always wins 100% of its challenges, but earthly hate promises but never delivers. Heavenly love, it, it, it hides the flaws, but earthly hate exposes the flaws. Heavenly love, it, 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 it generates, it opens up my spirit, whereas earthly hate, it exposes a loser. It looks like a winner. Heavenly love, 
it, 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 it gives me a fresh spirit, whereas hate gives me an evil spirit. Heavenly love, it saves me eternally because God is love, whereas earthly hate, it, it uncovers sin with no solution. May God bless every last one of you. May he bless every last one of you. Let us have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful. We're so thankful that you are a God of love. And your love is penetrating, unconditional. Your love is available for those who are loyal to you. Your love is available for those who seize the opportunity of coming to you. Your love is visionary. It looks out to protect us in the future. Your love is encouraging and edifying. It elevates us to a higher level. Bless our nation that we can begin to build the inventory of heavenly love uh, so that we can move ahead with the blessings that we have as a state, as a government. Bless the church that we will exemplify heavenly love as we go to and fro. May God bless every last one of us. These blessings we ask in thy name, amen, amen, amen. There might be somebody in our audience who want to be baptized today. You can do that. But that why do y'all have baptism on Sunday? Yeah, that's today. We baptize whenever you're ready to be baptized. There is no baptism on Sunday. That's a man-made thing. There might be somebody who uh, has already been baptized by the Scripture, but you need to rekindle your life and get it back together again. If we haven't learned anything, in 2020, we've learned that the Lord reigns. No matter how smart we are and how intelligent we are, we need Jesus. He's the answer. He will always be the answer. He will start you off and he will close you out. Mary Wilson, one of the Supremes. We grew up listening to Mary Wilson and the Supremes. Two are gone and one is still around. The Lord says, I bring you in, and I will close you out. I'm the author and the finisher. May God bless every last one. We sing the song of invitation, Brother Slay. There might be somebody who wants to respond to the invitation. Just stand where you are, and then we'll lead you to what you need to do. May God bless you. Brother Slay. the master of the sea from the water lifted me 